Hi, you're on a rock floating in space. Oh my god! What just happened? I saw eternity. What do you remember? Hmm. Let me tell you everything. The Pit is one of Hypixel's craziest game modes. In the past half decade, tens of thousands of players have spent millions of hours on The Pit. Thousands of exploits were discovered, abused, patched, and hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of items were bought, sold, and illegally traded. With the path the game has taken, The Pit is the closest thing Hypixel has to anarchy. My name is Sudi, and welcome to the complete history of The Pit, from start to finish, as we explore every level of the iceberg that is the high pixel pit. At its most basic level, the pit is a game mode with a giant map where players can jump down and fight people anywhere. It was released on February 26th, 2018, but its story starts far earlier. Three years before, in 2015, the Hypixel admin Miniclune created a game called Brawl for Minecraft Pocket Edition, where players with unlimited lives spawned on four different platforms and PvP'd in the middle. On Pocket Edition, this game was more popular than both survival games and Skywars, and Miniclune realized there was a demand for persistent games. A persistent game is one in which the game never technically ends, like Skyblock, opposed to finite games like Bed Wars and Murder Mystery. And so, Miniclune began development on a new project he called The Pit. The earliest known footage of The Pit is from the 22nd of February, a couple days before the official release in the Hypixel prototype lobby. The recording shows players testing out the game in a party with Miniclune and Doctor. When the game released in the prototype lobby, thousands of players flocked to try it out. They found the basic concept to be quite simple. Jump down, smack people for a bit, gain XP and gold with kills and assists, and level up more and more. With higher levels, players unlocked perks that could be purchased with gold. On the map, four distinct sections marked the water, mountains, lava, and sky areas. The map was surrounded by barriers, but a couple people realized they could escape and get onto the outskirts. The YouTuber Spifey and a couple of his friends did this, and they discovered there was a secret map still in render distance. After collecting gold to buy obsidian, they bridged out to this unknown frontier. They found it to be an unfinished version of the main map, likely a remnant from the builders. There, Spifey and his friends messed around for a bit and eventually died. Far from this secret landmass, player mosh pits formed in the center of the map due to the absurd amount of people jumping down. Players learned that the strength perk was totally cracked and allowed users to deal way more damage than they should have been able to, allowing some people to kill dozens of other players in a row. With each kill, the game has the potential to give a bounty to the kill streaker, a gold reward for whoever manages to take down that streaker. Initially, these bounties went all the way up to 10,000 gold but in the quick patch two days later, Miniclune capped them at 5k. Additionally, he added the Bounty Hunter perk, which provides gold leggings that grant extra damage against bountied players, and nerfed the strength perk. That same day, MM Ping -a -ding, -a ding was the first to reach the max level of 100 with 1 million XP. A couple other players hit this major XP milestone, and a week later, Miniclune changed the leveling system entirely. In the 0.2 patch, which added prestiges, players could now level up all the way to 120. When they did this, they could prestige to start again with access to the Renown Shop, which holds custom perks and abilities. The Renown Shop, fittingly, requires the currency Renown, a reward for prestiging. Every prestige has a gold requirement, but at the early prestiges, simply getting the kills to reach level 120 was enough to complete it. This same update also added the Vampire perk, which heals users every time they get a hit. 
Vampire later became the most vital perk in the game, but for now, most players simply used Golden Heads. This patch had a fascinating minor change that went totally unnoticed. At the bottom of the post, Miniclin wrote, fixed a bug where players could go way out of the map and start playing survival. This is distinct from the second map discovered by Spifey and others. Miniclin refers to players actually reaching a vanilla world. To my knowledge, there's no footage or screenshot of this vanilla world, but there were forum posts referencing it. I can just imagine bridging across the void only to find a chunk wall at the edge of the earth. Players started grinding the Prestiges, and Advisha became the first yellow and orange brackets at Prestige 5 and 10. On the pit, every 5 Prestiges has a new bracket color, with blue brackets for Prestige 1. With this race to the top, some players turn to cheats to gain the upper hand. For example, here is an early sighting of a hacker named For the Chancellor, who later changed his name to Arms of Spaghetti. Arms was extremely notable for the pit crimes he committed that summer, but I'll get to that later. On March 11th, the player Major Event got a hold of a lightning stick when he traded a flower to a Hypixel moderator. At the time, lightning sticks spawned tons of lightning when they were clicked, though the lightning wouldn't deal damage to anyone and was purely visual. Even today, there are stacks of them in the game because lightning sticks and other illegal items later became proof of duplication glitches, since only a couple were given out. After the time of this footage though, they stopped spawning lightning. About a week later, the day before the 0.3 update, Miniclune released a teaser for a new major event on his YouTube channel. Unfortunately, this Cthulhu situation was never added to the game itself and was left only in the development stages from what we can see on his channel. With the 0.3 update, the elements map was improved with a lot more detail. Also added was a new staple of the pit, major events. These are events involving every single person in the lobby, such as team deathmatch, beast, raffle, and rage pit. In these events, the top three players receive two renown, and those placing top 20 receive one renown. On top of major events, this update also added minor events including double rewards, king of the hill, bounty bump, and care package. The care package event dropped a loot chest, which had the chance to contain protection 1 diamond armor and sharpness 1 diamond swords. This update also brought quests and contracts. In the subsequent days, the pit's earliest duplication glitch was discovered, that being the ender chest dupe glitch. This exploit was initially found by MC Panda and Vietna. Utilizing this glitch, players duplicated Prot 1 diamond armor and Sharp 1 swords to streak with max gear forever and never worry about losing the armor when dying. The later board player Kuna actually loaded up 9 alt accounts with duped armor so he'd never run out even if the glitch was patched. Soon, the cheater fan Far On Cry achieved Prestige 15 and Red Brackets, and this is when I personally started to get into the game. In early April, I went on my first god set killstreak as a Prestige 4 with my friend DogV2, who I met on the Pit Community Discord server that was created and run by Vietna. Just days later, DogV2 and I were streaking when we were killed by a nicked hunter who took all of our health in a single hit. This hunter was likely Vietna or MC Panda, who were abusing the Kung Fu one-tap exploit that allowed them to deal incredible amounts of damage with just their fists. Even though they were under MVP++ nicknames, their true identities could be revealed through an exploit involving a Hypixel stats website called Max Corlar. The website showed a list of every single person in your lobby, so it was quite easy to identify who was MVP++ and was thus the nicked culprit. As a result, even bounty hunters with slash nick had to be careful about secretly hunting people they were supposedly allied with. Regardless, hunting became significantly easier when we encountered another glitch. DogV2, Kaiba, Vietna, and I discovered the Speed 2 glitch with the Impatient Renown perk. This perk, which gave unlimited speed and spawn, could be abused to get infinite Speed 2 anywhere on the map. By building up to the edge of the element tree and entering the spawn region from the outside, the perk was triggered, giving us infinite speed. However, speed could also be kept by jumping into the pit arena while hugging the edge of the spawn hole. We claimed hundreds of thousands of gold worth of bounties with this exploit. At the time of the infinite speed 2 glitch, a new player emerged onto the scene named Babs, 
who quickly grinded levels and made a name for himself with the Beast Event. In the Beast Event, gold is awarded to the beast every 5 seconds they are alive. Because of this, players used obsidian to block themselves in and build elaborate structures for a survival advantage. This was changed in the 0.3.1 patch, but people still managed to dominate the event through killing as many people as possible. Babs, for example, earned tens of thousands of gold with an astounding 127 kills across the 5 minute event. Even though beasts themselves being able to block themselves in was fixed, it was still a broken event. Players who became beast jumped into the void and pressed F3 and S at the same time would freeze in the air. When they died, they respawned as the beast and could simply camp in spawn for the rest of the event. Babs reached number 1 on the leaderboards on April 9th and a week later reached prestige 20 revealing purple brackets. Since the meta at this time was to streak with the proc gear obtained from care packages, everyone flocked to the care package events when those occurred. After locating where they spawned, many top players blocked them themselves in around the care package to get all the loot for themselves. While using this proc gear, the only real threat to streakers was bounty hunters, but even if a pit player wasn't killed, their streak could still end with an instant shutdown. An instant shutdown is when a lobby reaches the end of its life and closes so no new players can join. After 5 minutes, everyone still there is kicked out. On April 22nd, I was on a 727 streak when my lobby shut down. When this happened, I lost my kill streak and made a video documenting it. This was my first real pit video and it got a couple thousand views, which was pretty crazy for me at the time. This video thus marked my transformation into an official pit YouTuber. Babs also uploaded a video on bounty hunting, which went legitimately viral and currently stands at more than 25,000 views. I think a lot of my views came from the Pit Community Discord, but Babs was certainly watched by a number of non-Pit players. This channel is also viewed by a number of non-Pit players, and what you're watching right now took an incredible amount of work. If you enjoy the content, please subscribe. Obabe, an admin in the Pit Community Discord, manipulated Vietna into giving him his Minecraft account and owner privileges in the Discord. Obabe cheated on Vietna's account, got him banned from Hypixel, and kicked Vietna out of the Discord. Obabe ran the community for a while and continued the open nature of the Discord. Anyone could join, ask questions, trade with others, and chill. The Discord gained a lot of members by advertising with Pit YouTubers like Not Giovanni, Duct Tape Digger, and myself. Within the Pit community, though, smaller factions were formed, like the Black Hats. The Black Hats was an infamous Pit guild created by Prince Link. They distinguished themselves by dyeing the leather helmets unlocked at Prestige 5 completely black and hunting absolutely everyone, except for those people in the group. There were a number of leaderboard players in the guild, including Prince Link himself, x Rosh, Go Ahead and Rage, and Angification. The day after I joined the guild, I ran across Angification who was collecting golden heads and tossing them into an obsidian box. From this, I did some testing on my own and found out that it was possible to hold unlimited G-heads to have a near zero chance of dying while on a kill streak. Another prominent player called Void EXE abused infinite G-heads to go on a 5,000 kill streak. Getting that many kills takes hours and hours, so players took breaks in their streaks by building to spawn, chilling in the safe zone, and then jumping back down to continue their streak. Totally balanced, right? When the player Crimson OG posted a video of himself leaking the infinite G-head method, both building to spawn and the golden head exploit were patched. Barriers were added so people couldn't jump in to spawn from above, but it didn't take long before the pit player base found a workaround. Soon, people realized they could simply walk into spawn by going up the side of the mountains area and spamming their crouch key. This glitched out the launchers and teleported people into spawn with their kill streaks still intact. When Babs quit the pit because of its repetitive nature and the plethora of cheaters, Wolsey took his place as the number one player. Even without being able to build to spawn, she beat Void EXE's killstreak record, hitting 5,240 about a month after Void. Wolsey was gaining prestigious faster than anyone in the game before, and tore through the gold requirements like they weren't even there. She didn't abuse the G-head glitch, but instead took advantage of an exploit that was far more powerful. She, Automized, and a small band of others were abusing a party warp exploit to duplicate pro armor and bounties. Automized told XX Mining Pro 
method of doing the dupe involving slash play pit, and mining pro shared that info with Crimson OG. Crimson promptly leaked the duplication glitch to YouTube, and it was soon patched. But Wolsey and Otto could still do the bounty dupe with party warping. This is how Wolsey was able to prestige so quickly. She tore through the gold requirements like they weren't even there, because for her, they practically weren't. And so, Wolsey didn't take long to reach prestige 25 and become the first pink brackets player. In the middle of June, there was some big drama in the Black Hats Guild, when the player OTVX was kicked out for supposedly abusing a duplication glitch. I inquired about what happened, and he told Wasternia and I how the glitch worked. We abused it together for a while, and eventually Automized invited the three of us into their dupe group. Wolsey was in a race against time to get to Prestige 30, and so we all entered completely dead lobbies with 5,000 gold bounties and had an elaborate system to feed her as much gold as possible. Our factory farming method of grinding gold produced thousands of prot sets that we burned in lava and hundreds of thousands of gold an hour. In the end, Wolsey duplicated 17.5 million gold and became the first Prestige 30 to reveal white brackets. Just to show the power of this duplication glitch, I was on a kill streak one day when a bee hopping bounty hunter came after me. With no remorse, I tossed that prot set into lava like a hot potato, because for me, it was worth nothing. Before we move on, I have to thank Rezzy and everyone else who supported this project. Without them, this whole thing wouldn't have been possible. If you'd like to say thank you, you can do so by trying out the pit for yourself. Maybe you'll have some cool experiences that'll be recorded in a future pit history video. Wolsey achieved her goal of Prestige 30 just in time. Only three days later, the 0.3.5 Mystic update was released, which was absolutely monumental. Mystics are items which can attain custom enchants that give buffs to damage, defense, resource gathering, and mobility. Suddenly, the best gear went from the basic Prot 1 and Sharp 1 sets to sophisticated enchant combinations. Disregarding Mystics for a second, there were a number of other huge changes in this update. Enchanted Diamond Armor and Swords were removed from care packages, and players could no longer block themselves in to be the only one to get the items. On top of this, having a kill streak in the spawn region automatically reset it back to zero, which meant players could no longer stand in the safe zone and continue their streaks later. The Robbery Major Event was added, and participation XP awarded to players every 10 minutes was increased to be proportional to everyone's prestige. This buff to participation XP definitely wouldn't be a massive problem a couple years later, and was a completely meaningless change. Foreshadowing. 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 Also, for some reason, this update allowed players to do the Kung Fu one-tap exploit once again. MC Panda and Taco Cat abused that for a couple of hours before it was patched once more. On top of this, only Skelet leaked the party warp prot and bounty dupe that we abused with Wolsey, so that was patched as well. Okay. Let's talk about Mystics. These new items were completely insane. More than 120 custom enchants meant that crazy combinations were inevitable. The new perk Mysticism in the Renown Shop allows players to gain access to the Mystic Well, where they can enchant fresh Mystic Pants that have a chance to drop from kills. These items can be upgraded to Tier 1 or Tier 2, which requires gold. Upgrading items to Tier 3 requires the max level of Mysticism, and for a specific color of Mystic Pants to be sacrificed. Pant colors include red, green, yellow, blue, and orange, but they were all of them deceived, for another pant was made. In the land of Mordor, in the fires of Mount Doom, the Dark Lord Miniclune forged in secret a master pant to control all others. One purple pant to rule them all. Miniclune made a forum post detailing how a special feature in the code for pant colors had the small possibility of turning a select few pants purple after they were upgraded. As far as I'm aware, not a single pair of purple pants has ever been discovered or identified. Nonetheless, it's possible that a hidden account who played in the week or so between the Mystic update and when this possibility for purple pants was removed created them. Many new enchants made hunting and grinding significantly easier, and many more were totally busted. Resource enchants like Sweaty, Moctezuma, XP, and Gold Boost aided in getting levels in gold, and offensive enchants like Combo Damage, Shark, and Prune's Wrath made killing an absolute breeze. 
One of the new rare bow enchants added in the update was Robin Hood, which makes every arrow shot automatically move to hit its target. Connor Linfoot, the admin who coded the enchant, joined the pit on the update day and created a Power 300 Homing 4 bow, with Homing 4 doing the exact same thing as Robin Hood. Connor then gave everyone in the lobby the bow with a single command and created utter chaos. It was impossible to leave spawn without immediately being annihilated by a single arrow. I'm Just a Fish got his hands on two of these bows, switched lobbies, and got an 80 multi-kill from just a couple arrows. Mini Clune had to step in and made the remaining bows go poof, but Fish kept one in his ender chest for the next 18 months, silently waiting until it wreaked havoc once again in a totally different era of the game. Many of the new enchants were absolutely cracked. Some were totally glitched out, but others did what they meant to do, but were insane regardless. Lifesteal 3, for example, did exactly what its description said. It healed 113% of damage dealt, so 2 to 3 hearts every hit. Executioner, on the other hand, was even crazier because it was glitched. It killed anyone who had fewer than 8 hearts. MC Panda created the first Executioner and went on a rampage before the enchant was disabled. For some reason, Executioner wasn't fixed for close to a year. The player Godfrey Ninja enchanted the first Telebow, which teleports the user to the location where the shot arrows land. The bow had a 15 second cooldown and I purchased it from him for 2 prot sets. With the Telebow, I was able to zip zap zop around the map with ease, and what was even better is I could teleport into spawn even if I was in combat. The earlier changes meant that this wouldn't keep my kill streak, but it was nonetheless super effective to escape bounty hunters and get away without losing lives on my mystics. To demonstrate the effectiveness of Telebo, I have to shout out Kai CH for the phenomenal clutch he made after he was hit off the map. Absolutely remarkable. Just 5 days after my trade with Godfrey Ninja, Miniclin dropped the Fishing Club patch, which nerfed lifesteal to heal 13% of damage dealt and patched some earlier exploits. Mainly, the update added Aqua Pants, which have enchants like Unite that made fishing easier. A couple days later, For the Chancellor renamed himself to Arms of Spaghetti and proceeded to become one of the pit's most infamous players. He cheated extremely hard and scammed as much as possible. He promised people trades for good items, told them to drop first, and then refused to hold up his end of the bargain. With this method, he scammed a pair of Pit Blob 3 Pants, which spawns a slime that, at the time, had no size limit. ARMS created a massive blob that killed everyone in its path and was able to go on streaks in the thousands of kills. With the blob, he gained several prestiges and was only halted when an admin came in and disabled the enchant entirely. ARMS then proceeded to scam an explosive bow, which creates an explosion that deals true damage to everyone within a certain radius. At the time, explosive bow had no cooldown. Because of this, it was impossible to get near this man without being knocked away by the explosions or instantly annihilated. We had full-on pit wars, where close to a dozen players all went after ARMS of Spaghetti while he fended off every single one of us. Arms also abused the bow in the Rage Pit Major event and reached a damage record. MC Panda went ahead and enchanted a pair of Singularity Pants which were completely busted. These pants made it so regular sword hits dealt half a heart of damage or less. The only counter to this was true damage items like Arms' explosive bow or the Perun 3 sword he scammed from someone else. Perun's Wrath deals true damage every couple of hits, so Arms was unstoppable, even against players abusing broken items like Singularity. The 0.3.7 Pizza Patch was dropped on the 24th of July, and aptly released the Pizza Major event. It also added a couple of minor events, and most importantly, drop protection. Players sometimes lost valuable items because they accidentally hit Q with fat fingers, so Miniclune added drop protection, a toggleable feature which requires players to press Q multiple times before mystics actually drop. This made it much more difficult to accidentally lose items, and everyone was super happy because of this new addition. Miniclune also made it so that fresh mystic drops from kills were invisible and exclusive for 10 seconds to everyone except the player who earned the mystic item so that they had time to retrieve it without it being stolen. This patch also nerfed combo Stun, a rare sword enchant that gives people slowness for a couple of seconds after the attacker gets multiple hits. When mystics were first added, the amount of slowness was enough so that at the point the timer ran out, the attacker had already gotten several hits to reset the slowness timer, meaning if you got stunned, you were most likely dead. This update nerfed that. 
On the pit, generally, a player must wait 15 seconds after they've been hit to safely log out without losing their items. The slash spawn command is also unavailable while this timer is going. This update made it so the combat timer increased every 1000 gold a player has on their bounty, meaning that 5k bounties have to run for over a minute without being hit before they can safely slash spawn. The most significant part of this update, though, didn't come from the update itself. It actually came from the fact that MC Panda discovered a duplication glitch because of it. On the evening of the pizza patch, Miniclun rolled out the update and all the pit lobbies closed with instant shutdowns. When this happened, MC Panda opened his ender chest and put all of his items in. He knew with near certainty that doing this right at the instant shutdown would duplicate the items, and he was proven correct when he joined a new lobby and saw he had doubled his stuff. Panda told a couple of players, including Automized and Taco Cat, what he found, and they got to work. Panda borrowed Prince Link's artifact self-checkout threes, duplicated them, and gave Link two copies in return. Automize soon learned that I had some valuable items of my own and approached me as well. The player Vlades enchanted a pair of Double Jump 3 Mirror 1 pants that gave users the ability to jump insanely far and block true damage at the same time. I bought that item from Vlades and also traded a pair of Instaboom 3 pants to Skunker in exchange for his Telebo 3, which had a 2 second cooldown. Automized asked if he could borrow some of my items, and the next day he returned them. As a show of trust, he asked me to toss my teleboat into lava, which I did. He promptly gave me another copy, and outfitted me with the entire set. The entire set included my double jumps, Telebo, this Perun 3 that Panda casually tossed into lava, Panda Singularities, a Healer 3, and any other items we could possibly need. This dupe required waiting in lobbies for hours and hours in hopes of an instant shutdown, but it was totally worth it. In this clip, Panda is using the complete duplicated item set, which Automize, Taco Cat, Major Event, Minor Event, and I each had an exact copy of. To test out the enchant system, Tack, Auto, and Panda duplicated a ton of fresh and tier 1 mystic swords and tossed them into lava. This whole time we were tracking Arms of Spaghetti, and that same day, the Max Corlar Nick Revealer was patched. Even without pit surveillance technology, we were absolutely untouchable with these duped items. I went on a kill streak of 1500 and even AFK'd in a box in the middle of the map during it. The singularity pants were so overpowered that it didn't matter. At some point, the instant shutdown ender chest dupe was patched, but we still had our items. Other players got on the dupe train as well when Potty and Only Skelet accidentally ran across another party warp exploit. Potty was warped right before he tossed out an item in a trade, but he still had his item in the new lobby. The player he tossed it to received the item as well and Potty realized he now had a dupe. Ben B and Usher secretly observed Potty and Skelet, and they themselves figured out the dupe too. Wolsey learned of it and soon created a Robin Hood pull bow that was duped to oblivion with the same exploit. This bow was the most overpowered item in the game since Arms' is explosive bow. It guaranteed if a player was caught in the tornado of the Robin Hood's magnetic pull and didn't have a telebow to escape, they were certainly going to die. With Potty's dupe, there were dozens of copies of this bow in the game, and for a week or two, no one could do anything. After less than a month, dozens of players knew how to quickly duplicate items, and the game was total anarchy. Potty's dupe was monumental for a couple of reasons. It showed the danger in having a fast duplication glitch that worked on any items. Ben B and Usher also made history with the potential they found in IRL trading after they sold two life prune three swords. Even before the Mystic update, some people traded prot sets for rank upgrades and maybe a couple dollars on PayPal. But this was the first time when pit players truly profited. Buying and selling in-game items for real life money is strictly prohibited on Hypixel, but IRL trading is difficult to moderate, especially on the pit. With their prune three shop, Benby and Usher gained close to $300. This was unheard of at the time, but slowly ushered in a change in the attitude of pit players. Haha, <laughs> see what I did there? In later eras of the pit, players took IRL trading to astronomical extremes, with some people even spending tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah, that's right. This game is one of the craziest things that Minecraft has ever seen. The fun was put to an end on August 20th with the 0.3.8 Corals map. 
the third new world for the pit. This update patched the duplication glitch and added dupe detection to the game, a feature which found and removed duped items. The detection system was not perfect, and a lot of legit items were poofed because of it, but most of the crazy items like the duped Robin Hood Polbos, My Double Jump Mirrors, and Telebo 3 were all deleted. Speaking of Telebo, its cooldown was increased substantially with Tele 3 now having a 24 second reload time. The enchantments Robin Hood and Double Jump were removed from the enchant pool, so no new items could be made with those enchants, but the ones in the game could still be used until they lost all of their lives. Despite all the duplicated items being removed from the pit, the war against Arms of Spaghetti still continued. He cheated on the entire game and simply refused to get banned. While the Corals map update fixed the major item dupe, it took us less than a week to get back into business. I learned of a bounty dupe from MZ Panda, and players continue to duplicate prot sets using a daily log glitch. For some reason, combat logging saved your inventory if you did it once a day, and this also meant your armor had the chance to drop on the ground. People use this with alts to dupe prot, and I'm just a fish, Ochil, OTDX, and I used the bounty dupe to generate gold for our prestiges. In early September, I stumbled upon the secret to invincibility. By equipping pants enchanted with peroxide 1 while blocking with a bruiser 3 sword, I took zero damage. Once I hunted down a pair of peroxide 1 pants with mirror on them, I became unstoppable. The max bounty a player can reach is 5,000 gold, but that number can be increased with bounty bump events. After hitting a 5k, I survived through 13 consecutive bounty bump events to reach a bounty of 6.3 thousand gold. I did all of this while constantly bounty hunting, and if I wasn't hunting, I was being hunted while killstreaking. Eventually, I did lose my massive bounty when my internet crashed and I was unfortunately crit out while lagged out, but I was going to go down eventually. Even though I could stop any attack by simply blocking my sword, Peroxide 1 Bruiser 3 had two weaknesses. First was true damage, but that's why I found a pair with Mirror. The other weakness was bounty hunters with Kung Fu, who equipped the Marathon perk which deals extra damage if the player has speed. For some reason, this specific setup could hit through Bruiser, but there's an easy countermeasure. Kung Fu requires people to use their fists, and in vanilla Minecraft, it's impossible to hit someone with your fist if you have weakness. Despite Kung Fu dealing the damage of a diamond sword, this vanilla feature still carried over to Pit. As a result, the Wasp Bow enchant stopped any Kung Fu hunters right in their tracks. With my newfound lust for total Pit domination and no one there to stop me, I became determined to band together with the game's top players. Thus, I created Hotel Suite, a pit guild for only the very best. OTDX and I were co-owners, and we allied with a select few players and ruthlessly hunted everyone else. Right after Hotel Suite began, OTDX hit Prestige 30, the second player to ever do so. We continued to abuse the bounty duplication glitch, and while in a call in the Hotel Suite Discord, I'm Just a Fish and OTDX were exploiting when the player Kagru joined their call. Kag didn't make his presence known, and neither Fish nor OTDX knew he was there. From their statements telling each other to warp and when to hit each other, Kag pieced together exactly what they were doing and how they were doing it. He went and told some of his friends, including God Tier PvP, what he learned, and they started to abuse the bounty dupe as well. In October though, the guild came to an end when OTDX was banned by Watchdog for a year. Since he was the guild master at the time, there wasn't much I could do. Even though many of the chaotically busted enchants like Blob were fixed by this point in the game, the pit was still in an era of total mystic abuse. There were a number of Robin Hood bows still around, and of course, I can't discount my personal abuse of Peroxide. On top of this, people like Got PVPs and Two Letter Name exploited a Bad Lion client fly multiplier glitch in combination with Double Jump's ability to temporarily disable anti-cheat movement checks to soar far more than what was normally possible. There were tons of alliances, betrayals, hunting groups, and general chaos in the upper prestiges, which made the game incredibly fun. For a couple of people, the pit soon became a playground when they unearthed one of the most powerful exploits in Minecraft history. Automize, Panda, and Taco Cat were messing around with two Minecraft accounts open at the same time when they found out that there was a way to get both instances of the same player onto Hypixel at the same time. They didn't think they could do much with this because the command sent in the ghost account wouldn't go through, so they told Major Event what they found. Major realized that by warping into a pit lobby, they could get the ghost account into the game. Any changes made on that account wouldn't be saved, meaning they could enchant items, get killed, and even throw everything into lava. 
After doing this, their level, ender chests, and inventories would be as if nothing had happened at all. On September 23rd, Major went totally nuts with the double login glitch and was enchanting duped items for several hours with the help of Minor Event. MC Panda reported the glitch and Miniclin wiped the inventory and ender chests of both Major and Minor. He also permanently banned both of their accounts. Even though Panda reported the glitch, it didn't get patched for a while. And so, Major went on an alt account named Spodraman and messed around a whole lot. One of the tactics that Major used on the Spodraman account was Phoenix. Phoenix is a pant enchant that when a player hits zero health, it removes one life from the item, heals the user to full, and gives them plus 15% attack damage. On the duped account, Major loaded up his inventory with an unlimited supply of Phoenix pants. He jumped down, got smacked a lot, and was unkillable with the Phoenix strat, dealing more and more damage every time the pants activated. Major fought Arms of Spaghetti, who was still at large in charge and consistently scamming as many people as he could. Because of the game's lack of a trade system, there were a number of prominent mystic scammers like Surf and Nightloot, who gained immense wealth by offering to trade with other players and leaving after the other player dropped first. This was before the slash trade command, so there was massive risk in dealing with other players. Some people went so far as to fill their inventory with items, wait for the other person to drop, and then have a friend with double jump or a hacked client with the blink module to steal the item. That way people could protect their reputations, but still gain illicit wealth. After the Peroxide 1 invincibility exploit was patched, I pioneered a new method of hunting by getting respawn absorption 3 pants with a Gamble 3 sword. Gamble 3 will randomly deal 3 hearts of damage to the wielder or their opponent. When this is combined with the damage from the sword itself and Gamble's tendency to double hit, swords with Gamble on them are by default some of the deadliest in the game. Respawn Absorption 3 gives 15 hearts of absorption, so I was able to take down a great number of players incredibly quickly. Towards the end of October, Automize lent me a Sweaty 3 Perun 3 sword, Sweaty 3 Instaboom 3 pants, as well as a stack of lightning sticks that had been duplicated with the double login. Perun 3 was crazily overpowered because every third hit did 3 hearts of lightning damage. On top of that, Instaboom was one of the best pent enchants at the time because it allowed players to move around the map with incredible mobility and escape hunters and bee hoppers with ease. Automized, on Wolsey's account, battled a number of cheaters, including Got PvPs and Kagaru, while utilizing his duped items. Eventually, due to the amount of cheaters in the pit and how the staff didn't seem to care, Automize quit. Prince Link also disbanded the Black Hats Guild, and Arms of Spaghetti sold his main and alt accounts to Link, never to return to the game. I also began to walk away from the pit, as my family wanted me to focus on school instead of Minecraft. While I had amassed 500 subscribers and was looking to expand my YouTube channel, I generally stopped playing the game. During the time when Automized was still around, Kagaru was one of his biggest rivals. Just a week after Otto left though, Kag began abusing an item duplication glitch with a new exploit accidentally discovered by Sir Deadly. Deadly brought the dupe to the leaders of his guild, the Pot, and he, along with Kag and Potty, duped an incredible amount of items in a systematic manner like no one in the game had seen before. As Potty was exposed for cheating on his main, Kag loaded up a number of b-hopping accounts with duped items and hacked on everyone. The principal b-hopping account was named Wakeball who was feared by all. They duplicated tier 2 items with the hopes of enchanting swords with Healer, Billionaire, and Last Stand, all enchants which were part of the meta. Healer 3 heals the user and attacker 3 hearts every hit, Billionaire deals extra damage but costs gold, and Last Stand, due to a bug, gave unlimited resistance 3 which made it nearly impossible to die. Kag, Deadly, and Potty disguised their duping and threw others off the trail by hiding in the stats villager and they acted like that was the method of their dupe. This was a massive red herring, and to this day, the three of them are the only ones who actually know how the exploit worked. In the middle of February, Technoblade, of all people, joined the pit. He did the parkour in the Seasons map, played with I'm Just a Fish, and Kag outfitted him with some duped items. Techno played with Kag and Fish for close to four hours before logging off for the night. Using these items, Technoblade prestiged several times within the following week and eventually stopped playing the game. Periodically, admins joined the game to do a bit of trolling. On day one of the prestige update, Plank gave himself 500,000 renown. 
On another occasion before the Mystic update, Minikloon joined the game and gave a couple of people milk and cookies, which were later duped by Major Event with the double login exploit. On a later occasion, another admin joined the game and spawned a whole bunch of horses as well as a giant zombie. There's even images of an end crystal and the boss bar for an ender dragon, so someone spawned those in as well. While on the Spodroman account, Major Event accidentally teleported into the top of the Seasons map and suffocated. He was holding one of the last Robin Hood bows in the game and didn't want it to lose lives, so he tossed it onto the ground. However, because he was inside of the map, the Robin Hood rose through the blocks and he was unable to retrieve it. On March 11th, 2019, 108 days after Sir Deadly initially discovered the duplication glitch, it was fixed in the 0.3.9 tiny bug patch, which added new transfer technology and re-implemented the slash play pit command. While the dupe was patched, Kag, Deadly, and Potty were still stacked out of their minds with more gear than they knew what to do with. Less than two weeks later, I'm a Koala uploaded the first botting footage in the game. Koala is shown to be killing a number of bot accounts that were programmed to move to a specific spot on the map and drop their armor. This is the first footage I know about, which includes hard botting on the pit. But the practice of loading up a whole bunch of Minecraft accounts through OQ Minebot to bring onto Hypixel goes at least as far back as April 2018. This footage is also from Koala, and he has a number of bots in a Skywars lobby, but he didn't bring them onto the pit. As this was happening, Minikloon dropped the 0.4 Events Extravaganza update on April 29th. Earlier that day, Mini invited the members of Conclave, the exclusive group dedicated to making suggestions for the game and reporting bugs, onto the private pit test server called Testnet. While there, Automize discovered that if he logged another account onto the main server while on Testnet, he could perform the double login exploit once again and duplicated some rare items. Otto didn't have too much time to dupe because Mini closed Testnet not too long after and sent the full update into the ether. That added several new major and minor events to the pit, but for the top players and the pit economy in general, the auction event was the most significant. In auctions, items are presented and sold to the player who bids the highest amount of gold. Minikloon showcased this feature in the first auction almost a month earlier when he sold a custom mystic sword with 7 enchants and 15 enchant tokens that was bought by Skunker. Even though mystics were part of the prize pool, repair kits and funky feathers were far more valuable. Repair kits allowed the player base to bring back lives on their mystics for the first time ever. Before that, if you lost a life on an item, it was gone. As for funky feathers, they're sold in packages of 1 to 5 and save a player's inventory on death. Additionally, in this update, Minikloon at long last added the slash trade command, giving players 8 trades per day and a gold trade limit of 30,000. After the update dropped, people realized they could bot for gold in order to win auctions. Godfrey Ninja and Only Skelet went on a 6,000 kill streak by manually farming the bots with their swords on the account OSGN before it was permanently banned for security. I also gave my account to Major Event to bot, and on April 29th, it was banned for 360 days. Less than a week later, on May 5th, Minikloon released the Pit website called Pit Blue, which showcased the stats, inventory, and ender chest of any one in the game. With PitBlue, JMB uploaded a video with definitive proof demonstrating that Potty, Cag, and Deadly were duping, since they had multiple sets of identical mystics with the same max lives. On the day PitBlue dropped, Minikloon leaked an idea he had, Dark Pants, pants which were immune to mystics and would serve as their counter. 20 days later, the Dark Pants update dropped, but just before that though, a player named Taser is cute was supposedly exposed for engaging in activities on Discord that I can't disclose without getting demonetized. The pit community, in a rare moment of solidarity, banded together to take him down in a hunting session where over a dozen players absolutely dunked on this man. He stood at no chance against the full force of a united group of angry pit players. The 0.4.1 castle map and dark pants update on May 23rd brought the fourth map to the pit. The Dark Pants Minikloon hinted at a couple weeks earlier, and so much more. The new castle map had a number of new features, including
including the farms, the king's quest, and the sewers. In the farms, players could bake bread, gather eggs, hay bales, and sugar, all requirements for a mini cake. Getting a mini cake and earning 10 renown are the two requirements for the king's quest. The King's Quest grants 30% of an entire prestigious XP, no matter what level a player is, as well as a fair amount of gold. From level 0, a player will go all the way to level 80 in a single click. Another feature of the castle map is the sewers, wherein players can find sewer chests with the potential for sewer pants. One potential sewer enchantment is called Hidden Jewel, which will enchant the pants with a tier 3 enchantment at tier 1 when that player gets 117 kills. With this, someone could potentially get Critically Funky 3 as a tier 1 and then enchant the pants to tier 3 for a godly item. Crit Funky 3 became the best defense pant enchant after Last Stand was nerfed. This update also nerfed a number of other enchants including Instaboom, Healer, and Phoenix. Trade limits were also increased to 12 per day and a max of 50k gold instead of 30k. On the eve of this update, a couple players figured out that the gold given for bounty assists was busted beyond belief. Tag, God Tier, Wavernex, and Skunk all abused this before it was quickly patched. MC Panda and Taco Cat also found that the vanilla interactable blocks in the game, like anvils and cauldrons, could be accessed. Crafting is normally disabled, but these items weren't. They created a number of undyed pants, but what's crazy is that Panda took 8 Sharpness 1 swords he saved from before the Mystic update and combined them to create a Sharpness 4 Diamond Sword. Players began to use bread in their god sets as it healed 8 hearts and gave 1 heart of absorption, which was then brought down to 4 hearts and 2 absorption. This was enough healing to chug through any weapon, which was super useful in god fights or in combat with bee hoppers. Speaking of bee hoppers, in February, the same player JMB who exposed Potty, Kag, and Deadly for duping created a hunting group composed of armies of bee hoppers called the Pit Perchers, but they really gained traction after the Dark Pants update. Their goal was to annihilate top players who to abuse dupes and other exploits, but eventually they turned on the entire community and hunted everyone without mercy. Because the new Dark Pants disabled mystics, prestige zero accounts with Dark Pants could slaughter even the most stacked mystic users. The purgers behopped on the entire player base and charged payments for truces, usually feathers, which became the dominant currency after the update. If someone paid, their name would be put on the truce list, and most of the time the purgers wouldn't go after them. However, when other behopping groups began to form, people who wanted to play the game in peace without getting constantly cheated on had to give truce payments to multiple people and the game became even more toxic than it was before. Less than a week after the update, there was a crazy glitch with an unkillable player in the Blockhead Major event. I have no idea what's going on here, yet somehow this person was killed a number of times but was so angry he refused to die. That following day, in conversation with Major Event, I came up with the idea of creating a pit community channel where anyone could submit clips and footage that I would then edit and upload. We consulted about what to name it, and Major eventually suggested Pit Balls. Our first idea was to create a Hypixel Pit parody of Old Town Road called Old Town Pit. I must say, had we gone through with it, Old Town Pit would have been a masterpiece. If this channel hits 30k subs, I'll consider finishing that project. Since the start of the game, people were always finding ways to break the beast event. Beasts have double health but can't heal, so of course the community looked for ways to heal when they were the beast. Initially, this method was simply tenacity, the renown perk that gives a bit of health on kill. For a while before the mystic update, players abused the perk Rambo, which reduces max health but heals the user to full every time they get a kill. After that was fixed for beast, players turned to healer 3, which made it basically impossible to die. Eventually that too was was fixed. So after the Dark Pants update, the player base implemented the Golden Hearts 3 enchantment that grants 2 absorption hearts every kill. With G hearts, a good lobby, and a strong sword, 250 plus kills as the beast was pretty easy. On June 11th, Skyblock was released and a number of pit players quit for what became the biggest MMORPG in Minecraft. 
Just a day later, Major Event's main account was unbanned by Miniclune, despite the fact that his initial prison sentence was permanent. With Major's return, he, along with nearly everyone with a god set, abused Pit Blob 1. Previously, Blob 3 was the enchant that was totally cracked, and that was how we saw the massive slimes from Arms of Spaghetti. After that was nerfed, for some reason, Blob 1 simply became unkillable. A number of people, including Major and Mathematics, AFK'd in spawn while the Blob jumped around in mid to give them kills and assists. Major even used Blob 1 in a rage pit to get the second highest damage record at the time. Depending on the items that someone owns, rage pits are pretty easy to cheese. Kag, for example, used his Devil Chicks 3 Volley Bow to get 7000 damage without much difficulty. When the castle map update brought the dark pants that totally countered mystics, beehoppers had a field day. They now had the ability to take down almost anyone with ease, so a group called the Pit Gang was created to go to war against the dark hoppers, and specifically the Pit Purgers. After most of Pit Gang quit for Skyblock, Zimmerboy, Skirty, and HX Pulsefire were totally fed up with getting hopped on by the Purgers three times a day. Skirty had the idea of creating a so-called pit police as a counter to the purchase, and HX commented, yeah, what if we name it Pit Cops? They created a leaderboard and a hunting list filled with cheaters and b-hoppers where anyone could earn points every time they killed one of those hoppers or abusers. They were also awarded points if they hit people's unkillable blobs into the void. Major Event created a highlights video of his Prestige 23 which went viral, and he continued to upload highlights that got tens of thousands of views from people interested in seeing what gameplay for the top players on the pit was like. Major had some of the most exclusive items in the game, including Robin Hood, where only a handful of those homing bows still remained in existence. Nils had one before it was scammed by Minor Event. A couple of Robin owners, including Ochil, crashed lobbies by shooting homing arrows during the squads event. After this, Ochil, Hazel, and Katie Khan banded together for something they called Project Damocles. The goal was to bot as much as possible, get to the top of the leaderboards, and have enough accounts with millions of gold so that they could buy any auction in the game. Feathers at the time sold for 10 plus dollars each, so the botting group could definitely profit tons. They engaged in a number of shenanigans, including when Hazel discovered she could use martyrdom pants to bring creepers into spawn and push people into mid. This method allowed for the assassination of AFK players who thought they were safe because they were in spawn. She also used a number of watchdog disabling flight exploits and was generally a big hacker woman who reached prestige 30 with botting. Over the next couple of months, the group abused the rotation day glitch when the map changed so that they could bot in lobbies without anyone joining. Utilizing Pit Blob to kill the bots, they got the very first 10,000 kill streak in the game, as well as the highest streak ever at 62,915 kills. KatieCon, for an unknown reason, leaked the rotation day glitch, and other botters abused that feature as well. While botting was a great illegal strategy to get rich, the player Nils ZT gained a fair amount of wealth by trading mystics, sharking, and buying and selling items for real life money. Sharking is the practice of lowballing people for their high value mystics when they don't know the real price. Because there's an enchant in the game called Shark that works well when combined with Perun 2, a lot of people made fun of Nils by spamming Perun 2 Nils 3 in the chat. Nils made YouTube videos and gained hundreds of subscribers with his god fights and bad battles against bee hoppers. By now, there were tons of different bee hopping groups in, apart from the purgers, including hashtag plague, that simply wanted to cause chaos in the game and make it unplayable for anyone over prestige 2. In October, major event hit max level and soon the entire leaderboards were full of prestige 30 players. Not too long afterwards, minor event was unbanned by Miniclune, though he had been playing on the Star Pony Power account for quite a while before then. They soon teamed up with Ochil, who was playing on the Fishdoop Fishdoop account, while many other hunters allied themselves with Dark Hoppers. Speaking of, Ochil's cheating alt was named after the fish dupe discovered in early December. The fish dupe let players dupe fish, which could have been sold to the fish merchant on Castle Map for thousands of gold if not for the fact that the dupe was leaked, patched, and the merchant changed his price to one gold per fish before the map change occurred. Around this time, I started the Pitfall YouTube channel. <coughs> 
Although the initial idea was to name it Pitfalls, that seemed rather compromising. So I went with Pitfall instead. When I made a forum post about the community channel idea, several people in the Pit Cops group reached out to me. With them, we recorded and uploaded several videos where we, for instance, used the punch enchant three times in a row to get someone to space. We also bullied Octagonal Paul and showcased a couple of glitches. I haven't mentioned him so far, but Octagonal Paul was the most consistent pit YouTuber who uploaded chill videos consistently for more than four years, and he started right around the release of the game. On the topic of pit YouTubers, iSilas was someone who created the first dynamic pit texture pack that had custom designs for various mystic items. Silas also organized the very first pit tournament called Build to Win between all the godset users in the game. The reward for winning that tournament was a Mystic Repair Kit. Repair Kits normally can't be traded, but they could be transferred with the drop glitch discovered by Major Event a bit over a month before. The pit is infamous for hackers, so in order to ensure that no one was cheating, every build to win participant had to screen share themselves the entire time while on the Lunar Client. In one of the matches, Kag spent close to three hours, quote, getting on Lunar because he was trying to cheat. As a result of that delay, he didn't end up fighting his opponent, Night Loot. These godfights were the target of a crazy number of B-Hopper attacks, and Silas later organized Build to Win 2. For a pitfall video, the pit cops, including Mathematics and I, used Martyrdom in spawn to kill a number of AFK players and then uploaded to YouTube. Another exploit, this one discovered by Mathematics, was the Critically Rich Wolf Pack exploit, a method that allowed the abuser to gain tremendous amounts of gold incredibly quickly. On January 3rd, he and Creechun used the exploit to win a robbery event in 27 seconds. Soon after this, Math and I used the Volley Wolf exploit to lag out lobbies. On one attempt, as we were doing the glitch, the entire list of enchantments was posted in chat. I have no idea if those two events were related, but it was quite strange. We made another video about that, and it was fixed in the quick patch on February 28th. The quick patch brought in three changes. The first fixed the exploit. The second meant that Dark Pants now required the heresy enchant to be used, meaning B hoppers needed to be at least prestige 2 to use Dark Pants. And three, the prestiges 31 to 35 were added to the game. Right then, the race was on to become the first prestige 35, and Godhack and Katie Khan took the lead. Both of them abused the critically rich wolf pack exploit to farm their gold, a glitch which was done most effectively when the pants had both wolf pack and crit rich 3. Although there were uh, only a couple of pairs of those types of pants in the game, the players who owned them could be identified with the new Mystic Search feature on Pit Panda, the Pit Stats website that MC Panda had been working on for a couple of months. Initially, Pit Panda was designed to be a dark mode version of Pit Blue with a cleaner interface, but Pit Panda quickly became the primary Pit Stats website used by the community. On February 23rd, 2020, less than a week before the quick match, the Mystic Search feature was released. This had profound effects on the pit, and caused the largest wealth transfer in the history of the game mode. Suddenly, everyone had access to a list of every single player in the game who had valuable items, and tons and tons of people were sharked out of their OP mystics. This wealth transfer made it so the top players at the top became significantly richer and more powerful than they were before, and the rest of the player base was left mostly in the dust. On March 6th, Miniclune released the 0.4.2 Genesis map update, which added the fifth and as of right now final map to the pit. The update nerfed bread and the new map brought with it a number of broken features. For example, a squad's event was totally busted and for some reason turned everyone's name white. On top of this, the raffle box where people submit their tickets generated at the top of the map in spawn so no one could actually submit tickets. With the two different factions on the Genesis map being the angels and the demons, players can earn faction points and unlock different benefits and items, including access to the angel or demon demon spawns, and the Archangel chestplate or the demon boots, depending on which faction the player is in. The Archangel chestplate is a 12 life diamond chestplate with 10% damage reduction, and the demon boots counter dark pants, meaning with demon boots players can use their mystics against players in dark pants. Being in a different faction also unlocks the spawn region for that faction, but for some reason, people were able to place lava there. The pit YouTuber Real Smock showcased this when he drained the lives of every single mystic in Yorwichi's inventory. 
Eventually, most people caught wind of this, and no one really used the faction spawns. Even beyond the lava though, there was also an area in the main spawn where PvP was enabled. A number of people set their bots to go there, and farmed them with TNT. Around this time is when botting really became mainstream on Pit, and everyone with a mildly beefy PC and a license to OQ Mindbot was bringing in dozens of their laggy cousins to farm endlessly. Some people went so far as to drop their bots in public lobbies. As all this was happening, the Crit Rich Wolfpack exploit was operating in full swing, and robbery wasn't the only event that could be cheesed with it. In a rage pit, Major Event recorded himself getting 18,000 damage with a single wolf, and a gender hit the unequivocal rage pit world record of 124,000 damage using 9 wolves. Several people, including Ochil, Major Event, and I, were invited to Conclave in preparation for the 1.0 update that was soon being released. Miniclune opened the test server, and Major Event loaded his account with a whole bunch of valuable Tier 2s that he was intending to duplicate and enchant to Tier 3. Unfortunately for Major Event, Miniclune patched the double login test server dupe after Taco Cat accidentally duped 100 Renown. After finding out he wouldn't be able to dupe the items, Major instead uploaded a video doing the lava dupe. With inside information about what would occur in the update, Ochil gave me the funds to buy chunks of vial and mystic items that would soon become valuable after the update dropped. Chunks of vial were totally useless before this, so after buying them, we profited immensely when the 1.0.0 update officially released on April 22nd. The full release of the game patched the crit rich wolfpack exploit, the daily combat log glitch, and disabled the golden hearts enchantment during beast events. The update also had a somewhat faulty patch for the drop glitch. Importantly, this finally brought the pit out of the prototype lobby. In 1.0.0, new Mega Streaks were added to the game that players could activate, with the main idea being that streakers would receive extra rewards for every kill they got, but they would also take more damage. This made it so going on a 5,000 kill streak would be impossible, but not worth it either way. Additionally, the pair of upgrades called Assistant to the Streaker and Promotion made the problem of top players staying at the top significantly worse. Assistant to the Streaker made assists add to the user's kill streak, but when combined with Promotion, a player on a Mega Streak wouldn't lose lives on their items when they died. This was super overpowered and meant that a lot of people did low stakes godfights after hitting kill streaks of 50. Shop items, including first aid eggs, golden pickaxes, jump boost potions, tactical insertions, and pants bundles were all quality of life items added to the game. Eggs healed the user two hearts with a 10 second cooldown, tactical insertions allowed players to respawn anywhere on the map that they want, and pants bundles are one of Miniclune's greatest ideas ever. They allow people to combine 10 fresh pants into a single item so they're a lot easier to stack and take up significantly less inventory space. These different shop items, combined with auto buy, allowed players to automatically purchase another set of diamond armor, obsidian, pickaxes, and other items as soon as they died. For some reason though, items bought with auto buy wouldn't cost any gold. This update also buffed the trade limits from 12 to 25 a day and nerfed the lives on newly enchanted dark bands a fair amount. Players could now repair their mystics one life at a time with something called withercraft, a streak perk that cost chunks of vial and repaired one life on one item every 25 kills. Also, the pit supporter feature lets players above Prestige 2 purchase a feature in the Hypixel store for real life money, as a way players could show their support for the game. Pit supporter gives players cosmetic upgrades, such as the ability to dye Mystic Pants custom colors, the ability to have a star next to their name, view upcoming major and minor events, and showcase held items in chat. Just days after the update, my main account, Sudi, was unbanned after a full year of purgatory, and I purchased Pit Supporter on that account. As can be expected, the 1.0 release of the Pit brought with it tons of broken features, glitches, and exploits. For some reason, the double health given in Rage Pit could be kept after the event, which had never been the case before the game's release. I'm just a fish and an associate of his discovered a duplication glitch where this player's entire profile was reset every time he left the lobby. He could prestige, drop items, and leave, and when he rejoined, everything was if nothing had happened at all. He hit prestige 1 several times, only to be brought back to prestige 0 level 120. Neither Fish nor the player had any idea how the glitch worked, and supposedly it fixed itself after a couple of weeks. A new mega streak called the Uber Streak became one of the most consistent methods of gaining wealth. 
The Uber streak is a kill streak of 400 that gets more and more difficult every 100 kills. It's unlocked at Prestige 20, and players will only save their lives on their Mystics if they complete the streak with 400 kills. When they do that, they receive a reward which can be 1 to 3 feathers, a box of 5, 10, 15, or 20 Philosopher's Cacti, which are fresh pants of any color, a hidden jewel sword, plus 1% Mystic drop chance, or a totally legit gem. Totally legit gems are items that can upgrade any non-rare Mystic to one level higher. This means a sweaty 2 Executioner 3 sword can be buffed to a sweaty 3 Executioner 3 for a better grinding item. The hidden jewel swords operate in the same way that jewel pants do. 117 kills enchants the tier 1 with a level 3 enchantment, and once again these had the possibility of creating incredibly overpowered swords that previously couldn't be enchanted. What's fascinating is there was actually a method to create hidden jewels with any enchant that a player wants. This was found when someone was boosting hidden jewels with lava in the demon spawn and got the same enchantment every single time. As a couple of intelligent individuals discovered, hidden jewels track two numbers. The first is the number of kills the player has gotten while using the jewel, but there is another. The second tracker counts how many times the user's streak has been reset from going to spawn or switching lobbies. If that secret streak reset counter had a number between 1 and 10 when the jewel hit 117 kills, then the enchantment the player got was random. If it was between 50 and 60, the enchant was rare. If it was exactly 64, the jewel would become critically funky 3. And after 120, this counter would reset back to 0. HX Pulsefire tested this out when he learned that rare enchantments occur when the counter is between 50 and 60. With three different jewels, he got three rares. When jewel swords were added in the 1.0, update, this mostly unknown feature was changed. While hidden jewel swords brought the possibility to create legitimately overpowered swords, what was more OP were the glitches that could be performed with gems. Every time an item is gemmed, it has a gem tag. For the purposes of keeping the game balanced, items can only be gemmed once. However, Skunker was the first person to realize that gem tags could be removed if the item the player had lost lives. Skunker upgraded his Billionaire 3 Lifesteal Punisher Sword to Lifesteal 3, which is an incredibly good healing item. This made it possible to gem items as long as the total number of enchant tokens remained below 8, and as a result, items that have no right existing were nonetheless created. Dying being a method to remove gem tags was quickly patched in the 1.0.1 Fixes update a week after the 1.0 release. This update also brought the end to several other post 1.0 exploits. The update disabled devil chicks during major events, and I have to say, that one is probably my fault. A player named Letha Lemon bought a duped Devil Chicks 3 Volleybow from Kagaru and used it along with Blob 3 to win nearly every single major event and earn tens of thousands of gold every time. He did this so he could snipe auctions, but also earn gold by auto-clicking in the giant cake events, which brought him between 50 and 100,000 gold per cake. Anyway, the reason I say that Devil Chicks getting disabled in major events is my fault is because I asked Letha to record his exploding chicken activities for me, which I turned into a pitfall video. If it wasn't for that, I'm not sure that many clune would have disabled devil chicks during major events. Apart from that though, this update also made it so that a long-standing electrolytes feature wouldn't work. By taking electrolytes 3 pants, landing 2 bow shots with faster than their shadow 3, and then killing a bunch of people, it was not difficult to get unlimited speed 4. This was patched, but major event showcased himself using a gem to create the very first mega longbow sprint drain 3 bow. Sprint drain 3 3 gives a couple of seconds of speed 2 every time an arrow is shot, but it wasn't possible to have Sprint Drain 3 in combination with Mega Longbow before gems. Soon, Mega Drain 3s became imperative for any godsick user. On May 8th, Kalu completed an uber streak with my pair of Crit Funky 3 Pit Blob 3 pants. In combination with Assistant to the Streaker, Kalu finished the uber much faster than any other strategy, and this method of using Blob to get assists caught on. That is, for legit, or mostly legit, players. Other people simply botted for ubers, usually using TNT. Three days later, Minor Event became the first maxed out player at Prestige 35, 
unlocking the aqua brackets, and a lot of his success has to be credited to Ochil or Fishdoop Fishdoop. On that cheating account, Ochil built Miner's obsidian rings, protected him from hunters, and killed other people trying to streak in Miner's lobbies. Many other people have since copied this method of having a helper while on kill streaks to build rings, and even today, that practice is referred to as fish duping. After martyrdom was patched, Mathematics and I abused another exploit to kill players in spawn. I dug down a couple blocks to where I could be hit, and then Math jumped down using a pole bow and shot me. This brought AFK people standing by the edge down with us. Right around this time, a player named Iced7EQ discovered one of the most monumental exploits in the history of this game mode. The new Prestige 7 shop item, Tactical Insertion, allows people to respawn anywhere they want in the map immediately after dying. When this was combined with Auto Buy, which didn't take away any gold, this meant that people could set up their alts with Tactical Insertions to be farmed endlessly. This was incredibly powerful. Only Skelet used tack boosting to become the second person to hit max level, and tons of other players used the exploit to farm uber streaks. Although dying with gemmed items wouldn't remove the tag, the pit cops found out that the tag would be removed if the item's lives were repaired with Withercraft. In combination with the near infinite uber streaks with tack boosting and double gemming, the pit cops, the destroy group, and a number of other people became significantly more stacked than they were before. While the cops were tack boosting, Creechun defended them while abusing a trash panda perk swap exploit that gave him unlimited healing and invincibility. Creechun also abused another variant on the infinite G heads glitch to reach invincibility and 1v6 the huntsman. These weren't the only exploits the cops used though. After I saw a player take zero damage while blocking his sword, I thought back to the Bruiser 3 Peroxide 1 exploit from 2018. I tested it, and sure enough, Peroxide 1 was back. At this point in the game, it wasn't as overpowered as it was back in the day, because Dark Pants could still hit through the Peroxide 1. Nonetheless, the glitch was OP in dealing with non-Dark Pants bee hoppers and other Mystic abusers. Another tactical insertion abuser was OTDX, who also used it for uber streaks, but on May 27th, he left the game for a standard lobby switch. When he rejoined, every single one of his items was removed from his inventory, and they were simply gone. There was nothing OTDX could do to get the items back, and to this day, I have no idea why they disappeared like that. The following morning, Lucky Kessie joined the pit, patched tack boosting, and banned a bunch of people including Sado, Lethal Lemon, and Godhack for abusing it. Tons of abusers reached insurmountable levels of wealth in the couple of weeks while the glitch was active, and only a few people were actually banned. On top of that, the pit comps who were banned still got all of the spoils of the glitch one month later when their bans expired. Tactical Insertion and the Pit Panda Mystic Search are the two events that most changed the pit's wealth imbalance. While previously only a handful of people had unkillable god sets, this series of events increased that number to the dozens. The massive wealth generation from tactical insertions also corresponded with the blossoming IRL market. The pit's illegal marketplace had been growing since the Dark Pants update and exploded with players like Too Godly dropping thousands of dollars on the game. By now, some items like billionaire lifesteals were regularly bought and sold for hundreds or even thousands of dollars. This increase in wealth also meant an increase in greed. Scammers were always part of the game, but this era changed things. The pit now saw thousands of dollars of items being scammed every week. For instance, Dell lended Healthy Diets and Master Center a pair of max gold pants. Diets and Master Center scammed Dell and then got wiped with those pants. Even crazier than that, only Skelet stole Nils' entire account on June 6th. Nils shared his account with Skelet for him to boost, and Skelet stole everything when Nils accidentally broke Skelet's Shark 3 Prune 2 Gamble 1. While on Nils' account, Skelet also went on every single server and hacked to get Nils banned. Salt in the wound. By now, it was clear that the ill-gotten gains from tack boosting and double gemming were in the game to stay. When Lucky Kessie joined the pit to patch the tack exploit, her fix only applied to that, not the glitches that surrounded it. For instance, Creechun's perk swap god mode glitch was streamlined by a couple of coders, and they became insane bee hoppers with what looked like a creative mode on Hypixel. The perk swapping disabled Watchdog, meaning these hoppers could fly around, use infinite kill aura, and any 
any other hacks without getting banned. On June 24th, Hero C was silently moved to Prestige 6. There were no patch notes for this change, so people realized when B hoppers who wanted to start dark hopping at Prestige 2 weren't able to do so. However, this change didn't apply retroactively, meaning any Prestige 2 dark hopper accounts already in the game could keep using Heresy as long as they didn't get banned. Nevertheless, Prestige 6 takes a lot longer to reach than Prestige 2, so a new market emerged of accounts botted to Prestige 6 and then sold to hopper groups. Just days after this change went into effect, OTDX challenged himself to see how fast he could get Prestige 35 using the best items in the game with the fastest strategy. On June 29th, he started the account Oliver Tron DX, and it took him just over a week to get 30 prestiges. Because of the XP scaling, it took him another two weeks to get to Prestige 35, the fastest that anyone has gotten Prez 35 legit. If things got dangerous, OTDX would shoot someone with an arrow and then log out. For some reason, this wouldn't take lives away from his items even though he was in combat. He, the Huntsman, and a couple of other people abused this glitch to save lives before it got leaked to the broader community. As I mentioned previously, this era saw a large increase in the number of massive item scams, sometimes of entire accounts. That was the case when Night Loot stole everything on Victor's account worth several thousand dollars. A big factor driving these scams are the insane prices that pit items go for on the IRL market. Some of those prices are so high because of high value buyers, people who move cash in far greater quantities than anyone else. The pit's largest money mover, Rezzy, began to play on the account 6474 around this time, and he bought tens of thousands of dollars of pit items using the millions he earned from cryptocurrency. Immediately, Rezzy made a huge splash on the market, buying and selling high value items like they were nothing. Thing. To demonstrate how things work, let's say I have a billionaire three sword worth around $2,000. If Rezzy wanted to buy it, we would negotiate a price and then one of us would agree to go first. It would probably be me because generally the people who are paying IRL usually go second. If I didn't trust Rezzy, I would probably give the sword to a middleman and then Rezzy would send the money via PayPal or cryptocurrency. The middleman would then give the sword to Rezzy and everyone would be happy. However, that describes the ideal situation, but things have the tendency to be a bit more complicated. To begin, if Rezzy sent the money first, I could simply refuse to give him the sword. If I gave the sword to a trusted middleman, who's to say he won't forsake his reputation for two grand profit? This has happened a number of times, where trusted middlemen ran off with thousands of dollars of items. All this IRL trading is strictly against Hypixel's rules, but when have Hypixel rules stopped pit players from doing anything to get ahead? With all these potential avenues for scams, the the only guaranteed way to trade without getting burnt is with the trade menu. That has big limitations. For one thing, each player only has 8 slots, so if a trade has a lot of items, good luck. Secondly, you could totally get scammed. Imagine this, you join the pit to trade your Shark 3 Executioner 3 for half a stack of feathers. The guy you're trading with puts the feathers into his side of the trade menu and you put your sword in as well. After 3 seconds, both of you hit OK and boom, the trade finishes. Your sword disappears, but the feathers aren't in your inventory either. What happened? On August 24th, the Brazil group went around scamming as many people as possible with this trade menu exploit. By putting items into the menu, adding zero gold, they they could take items out of their side of the menu without the other player noticing. It would still look like an item was on that side, however it was a total ghost. All this for block game items. Playing the pit can cause anxiety. If you're kill streaking, hackers, hunters, and potential threats can drop down at any time. Little buddy. <laughs> 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 to counter this, dropping created a cheater detection mod, which alerts the user every time people on a specific list join their lobby. If the user wanted to add a name to the list, that was super easy. Thus, anyone using the mod had a clear view of all the threats who were in or joined their lobby. This was the first of a number of mods in the pit community created to detect cheaters. Later on, these mods were upgraded to alert if anyone in the lobby was wearing dark pants. With all the benefits, though, to detecting threats, in the 
game, there was still massive risk that the mod itself was the threat. Whenever installing a mod from another player, there's a chance it's laced with malicious code. On the 1st of October, that's exactly what happened when Ek, also known as Pelican, installed a modification which gave the botter RageBit the login information to Pelican's main and alt accounts. When Pelican logged off for the night, RageBit silently joined, transferred Pelican's $10,000 worth of items to secret stash accounts, and the community was left baffled. At the time, this was the biggest scam in history, and once again revolutionized how scams occurred on the pit. After this, the number of incidents of people getting ratted skyrocketed. Ratting stands for Remote Access Trojan, the Trojan in these cases being code that steals login information. Despite breaking real-life laws, tons of wannabe rage pits copied his method of theft in the pit and eventually even Skyblock. Thanks, RagePit. When this happened to Pelican, the Pit community knew about the scam even before he did. When Pelican logged off for the day, people saw on Pit Panda his main and alts were totally cleared of items. Pelican was one of the last people to learn that he was scammed, and he found out when he tried to log on and was banned, and then checked his Pit Panda. The amount of information contained on Pit Panda is quite immense. For example, I and a couple of members of the Pit Cops noticed that the Huntsmen were collecting gold nanofactories in large quantities. Gold nanofactories are a mega streak perk that spawn seven gold ingots each. When a stack of these is dropped onto the ground, lobbies lag a ton. I had theorized that someone could potentially crash a lobby and duplicate items with enough nanofactories. When we saw the Huntsmen collecting nanos, I knew exactly what they were doing. In association with Skyblocked, Lethal Lemon, and a small band of pit gamers, we created a dupe group to rival the Huntsmen. I started gathering favorable tier 2 items, and I figured that even if we could get the crash to work, it would probably be inconsistent at best. Thus, it would be a lot more profitable to dupe a full inventory of tier 2s every crash and hope that one of them turned out to be good when we enchanted. On the pit, there are tons of low prestige players who don't have the mysticism level to upgrade items to tier 3 so they're sitting around with tier 2s that sometimes have a lot of potential. For instance, a tier 2 lifesteal 2 sword, if enchanted with billionaire 3, is worth roughly 2 grand. I spoke with MC Panda, who created a mod that alerted me to all the tier 2 items in my lobby owned by players under Prestige 10. At the same time, my dupe group was collecting gold nanofactories, but when we tested it, we realized there would be a big barrier to actually crashing a lobby. FPS. Spawning a load of entities causes server-side lag, but it also lags the computers of everyone in the lobby. Sometimes so much so that Minecraft drops to zero frames per second or even crashes. To solve this, Lethal Lemon developed a mod to make it so that the gold ingots weren't actually rendered in client-side. This meant we could focus on trying to crash the server rather than crash our own computers. Even with the mod though, that was a tall order. No one had legitimately crashed a server in over a year, and they had done that before Miniclin beefed up the RAM of all the pit servers. After realizing the amount of gold it would take to actually crash a lobby, we gave up on the challenge around the same time that the Huntsman gave up too. Just a couple of days later, dozens of high prestige players got together and took a mega screenshot. Right after we quit looking for the duplication glitch, the high level players Bubbles and Vaish were outed for duping. At least, that's what we thought. The pit cops and other groups suspected this when Vaish enchanted a billionaire to Lifesteal 3 and people started looking into their items on Pit Panda. Despite having little connection to the pit trading community, both of them were extremely stacked and had multiple copies of items with the same enchants. For example, Bubbles owned 6 Shark 3 Executioner 3s with different lives. People got suspicious, and after a couple of weeks of investigation, the pit cops figured out that Bubbles and Vaish used a similar strategy to the one I employed of sharking nons for tier 2s, but they did it to a significantly greater degree of success. While this was happening, I was on a secret mission of my own. In mid-August, I learned of a bread duplication glitch from Dtop, who's one of the pit's most talented glitch hunters. The bread dupe worked the exact same way as the fish dupe, but no one except Dtop actually thought to test the fish dupe with other items. On King's Map, bread could be sold to a villager for 24 gold each, or over 1.5k per stack. While this was less than the 40 gold or 2.5k per stack that fish would have netted, I was confident that the bread dupe would remain hidden until the King's Map rolled around. With this newfound knowledge, I coded a simple macro to duplicate bread for me and automatically stash it in my alt. 
I ran this overnight on my laptop for several weeks, netting about 300 stacks of bread, or a bit less than 500k gold, per hour. I thought I had things down to a science, but really, I had no idea what I was doing. At the same time, Dtop told Ragepit of the bread dupe, and he employed his immense coding ability to create a bot that was orders of magnitude more efficient than my own. He had four accounts running the bread dupe macro every five seconds, making 4,000 stacks an hour. That's 6.1 million gold per hour, running 24 hours a day. Ragepit and I connected over the bread bot adventures, and he and a couple of other experienced pit botters came up with a plan. They decided to try and get as many prestige 20 accounts as possible using duped bread and botting. With this method, KDCon leveled up the Thanks Miner account to Prestige 29 in 4 days. Despite this being one of the most dangerous times to bot due to the somewhat watchful eyes of staff, Ragepit and the boys used a staff checker to instantly log off whenever a staff member joined the game. On November 30th, a player named Ouija joined the pit. At least, he joined it partly. Ouija found himself on Hypixel and his friend Artie's server at the same time. Hypixel was acting super wonky, and on Artie's server, Ouija was given creative mode. This somehow gave him creative mode on Hypixel, and he got banned moments later after breaking blocks on the pit and attempting to fly. Ouija got all this on recording and was unbanned a couple days later. Just a week after this, some insane drama went down with the Huntsman, and that all started when Rezzy showed up with $50,000. Major event, minor event, Ochil, OTDX, Zack, and I'm Just a Fish were all sharing items with one another, so a couple people could have maxed out god sets while the others weren't playing as much. Anyway, they were boosting Jessica's account when Rezzy offered $50,000 for every single one of their items. The Huntsman got into a big argument about how much money each person should get, and since Major, Minor, and Jessica were the ones holding the items at the time, they decided just to walk away with them. Walking away also meant logging onto OTDX's account and stealing every item on there as well. Insanity. This story isn't over though, because it didn't take long for KatieCon to get revenge. Since the bread dupe was still going on in full force, Miniclune knew he had to take action. In doing so, he created the most controversial update in pit history. The 1.0.1 Rage Pants update was released on December 16th, which patched the bread dupe, added a 2000 item limit to the bread merchant to prevent mass sales, nerfed Crit Funky and Lifesteal, buffed Singularity, and added Rage Pants to the game. Though the bread dupe was patched, Rage Pit still had hundreds of millions of gold worth in various stashes. On top of that, the merchant limit was designed to make sure that people could only sell 2,000 bread per day, worth about 50,000 gold. At least that was how it was intended to be designed. Instead, the limit was glitched to mean only 2,000 items could be sold per click, meaning that with just a couple of inventory slots filled, anyone could cash out their bread like nothing had happened at all. Barely anyone was talking about the bread dupe though. The community discussions and flame wars centered around the update's nerf to crit funky and lifesteal, as well as the addition of rage pants. The vast majority of top players in the game absolutely hated the update because it nerfed the best anti beehopper defense enchant and general healing enchant. The vitriol was so intense that someone went so far as to dox Miniclune. The Rage Pant addition itself was also pretty wild, because new enchants like Regularity allowed players to activate Perun every two hits. Due to the harsh and fiery backlash to the Rage Pants update, Mini Clune capitulated and changed some things in the 1.0.3 update a day later called the No Rage patch. These changes included a buff to Crit Funky and the addition of RGM. Crit Funky was still worse than it was before, but it was now no longer totally worthless. Within a couple of months, the game would reach equilibrium once more, but this is when quite a few top players quit the game. Many also say it was the catalyst for the downfall of the pit. Right at the end of 2020, Letha Lemon monumentally earned 100 million gold in his bank. Not long after that, just 5 days into the new year, a couple of players discovered how to do the double death glitch. 
The double death glitch is a bug that haunted both the pit and skyblock for years. When a player in either one of those game modes was hit to exactly zero health, their stuff would disappear, they'd come back as a ghost player with 10 hearts, and then could be killed again. When this happened, the victim of the glitch lost everything in their inventory. Later on, Double Death was patched, likely because of this video. That same day, Jamdiam and Zia Fox discovered RGM swapping, which allowed the exploiter to deal a lot of damage. On January 14th, 2021, the Pit community woke up to find the accounts of Major Event, Minor Event, and Rage Pit all cleared of items. Major and Minor were banned, and the fate of Rage Pit was unknown. Major and Minor were holding the thousands of dollars of Huntsman items in their inventories when this occurred, and no one had any idea what happened. Was it admin intervention? An account login exploit? Well, actually, it was KatieCon. Kate had been kicked out of the Huntsman before Rezzy made his $50,000 offer for their items, and Minor was still holding the items Cade scammed from Skunker. Complicated, I know. Pretty much, Cade was mad at Miner for stealing his stuff and not giving him a portion of Rezzy's 50 grand, so he devised a plan. With the help of Rage Pit, KatieCon created a modded multiplayer server and included in the mod pack an account ID stealer and a logger of basically all the information on the mod pack user's computer. So it was a massive rat. When Ochil and Major installed the mods, Cade then had access to all of their information, including Minecraft accounts, alts, Discord logins, browser history, everything. Cade went on to Major, Minor, and Fishdoop Fishdoop, stole all the items, and proceeded to sell them on the pit's black market. While he was doing that, Cade recorded this clip of flying around on Major Event to get Major banned. As for Rage Pit, he simply moved all his items to an alt to cause more confusion. It's actually unfathomable, the lengths that people will go for block game items. When the truth about what actually happened was revealed, Cade and Rage Pit started grinding a ton with the gear they stole to flex on everyone. Cade changed the name of the account he botted and leveled up with Bread to Thanks Miner. They played with QRE, who uploaded a video of the three of them going at it while blatantly cheating, of course. Despite the fact that Hypixel doesn't ban from player footage, someone forwarded this gameplay to a helper. That landed a 180 day ban for QRE's main and a one year ban to his alt. Thanks Miner was also banned for six months, and Rage Pit was banned for 30 days. Somehow, though, just a month later, something happened that shouldn't have been possible. Major came back with nearly all of his items. This shouldn't have been possible since some of those items were on Cade's six month banned account. But as it turns out, Cade was lying. This isn't the first time Cade lied that a ban was longer than it actually was. Cade's account, Agenda, was supposedly banned for six months back in mid 2020, but like Thanks Miner, it was also in reality a 30 day ban. So, Major was back with all of his stuff. How did this happen? I know the answer to that question, and I'm currently under a non-disclosure agreement, so I can't say. While all this was going on, I was messing around with a couple of exploits that had big potential, but were generally just a bit of fun. On January 16th, I took some hedge fund pants, which remove gold from you every time you die, got down to zero gold, and then repeatedly died way more to reduce my gold even further. This was how I got negative gold. Unfortunately, billionaire doesn't work with negative negative gold, which is what I was intending to use it for, but nonetheless, it was pretty funny to go around trolling and confusing everybody. That same week, Mathematics, Creechun, and I were looking for a duplication glitch when we figured out that by placing lava buckets in the sewer before a sewer chest spawned, the sewer chest would get deleted by the lava. If one of us had the chest open while it was deleted though, all of the items in there would turn into zeros. This glitch was crazy difficult to pull off though, because lava only lasts 10 seconds, and we could only place the lava at one spot at a time and just hope we get lucky and the chest would spawn in that location. Over the next couple of weeks, I'm Shy and a few other cheaters utilized the perk swap watchdog disabler exploit to reach total god mode. I'm Shy coded this into a client which automatically swaps the perk while the UI was closed, meaning he could fly around without his view being impeded. Eventually, this part of the exploit was fixed when the UI was automatically closed if someone was too far away. Even still, some of these clips are pretty insane. Over the next couple of months, pit players pushed botting in public lobbies to the absolute limit. Silent botting is the practice of dropping a couple of bots into the middle of the map, which often attracts more nons to the mid area. 
With the number of low prestige players getting smaller and smaller every day, some people brought in dozens and dozens of bot accounts to the same lobbies and publicly grinded out uber streaks. This crashed the gem, cactus, and feather economies because of the insane influx of those items. The reason these people could get away with this though was because of the lack of moderation in, and staff vigilance in the game. However, that changed on July 14th when there was a massive ban wave on the pit. Dozens of top cheaters in the game were banned at the same time, which coincided with when game masters were introduced to Hypix. Soon after this, Jeffrey Colon decided to push botting even further by seeing how fast he could do uber streaks with 80 bots in a maxed out lobby and using the fastest methods of grinding available. By now, Colin realized that Devil Chicks 3 volley was the best way to kill loads of bots at a time, and so he grinded out the 400 kill uber streaks and got the world record fastest time of completing an uber in 20 seconds. It also only took him a couple of weeks to reach 100 million gold using this same strategy. The game had been in a stalemate for a number of months. The player base was dwindling. The only people who were actually dedicated were all super rich because they earned their wealth from before, making it impossible for new players to compete. Top players weren't losing wealth either because they could save lives on their mystic with the promotion perk every time they went streaking. Even if they somehow did die though, they could easily fix their items with Withercraft. Keeping this in mind, Miniclune, with the first update activity in nearly a year, released the 1.0.5 tryhard patch on November 18th, 2021. Here, Miniclune increased the cost of repairing items with Withercraft and made it so promotion no longer saves lives. This update also patched the double death glitch, nerfed the combination of Gamble with Hermit or Auras of Protection, and added prestiges all the way up to 50. It also added the insurance perk, which was totally totally busted. Insurance could be unlocked by anyone at level 35 and was meant to help low prestige players survive for longer by granting an extra life and resistance too if the player died within two hits. What it really did was made bounty hunters 10 times stronger and made dark hoppers nearly invincible. Immediately, 26 people who were Prestige 35 level 120 got to Prez 36, with HX Pulsefire being the first. The Tribehard patch temporarily revived the game and removed tons of cheater accounts by bringing the pit into Hypixel's competitive game system. This meant that anyone who got banned could no longer access the pit in the same manner they'd be banned from Ranked Skywars and UHC. This resurgence was short-lived, as Hypixel soon implemented a change that nearly killed the pit entirely. On December 1st, 2021, Hypixel made Microsoft Migration a requirement for playing the pit. Minecraft accounts which hadn't switched over to the new system of login simply couldn't join the game. This requirement only applied to the pit and a couple of other game modes, so it greatly reduced the number of low prestige players that people saw. It dropped the player count from 500 to 200 overnight, as tons of people didn't care enough about the pit to change the status of their Minecraft accounts. With this lack of low level players, streaking legit became nearly impossible. The only people who were consistently leveling up were botting, exploiting, or doing both. This is right around when HX Pulsefire began to abuse the participation XP exploit. While AFKing in lobbies for free XP, HX only took a month to reach number one. He became the first Prestige 40 on the first day of 2022. While all this was going on, a player named Zeafox developed an auto grinding script using Vape V4. This script acted like a regular pit player, gaining XP and gold. Over time, Zia enhanced the script, making the bots more and more sophisticated so that they could play the game and level up without any human intervention. Later on, he created a Discord server for botting as a service, where he put four auto grinders on into a lobby where people were uber streaking and they could kill them. He and Kondu Funder realized that simply auto grinding, collecting the fresh mystics and chunks of vial, was a lot more profitable though. For example, Kondu Funder got a prestige 15 account all the way to Prez 25 without putting in much manual work. These auto grinders acted like real players and opened the door for the next generation of silent botting. People like Zia and Omi created silent botting services where you could purchase bots that would automatically join your lobby. They would look like real players, which made it a lot more difficult to, for staff to ban for boosting. And it also meant that there were actual nons in the middle of the game to streak off of. 
While HX Pulsefire had gotten to Prestige 40 and beyond using Participation XP, several players got Prez 40 using Silent Botting. With the To The Moon kill streak, people could get close to 2 million XP per streak. Someone even got an account to Prez 40 in 300 hours. As this was happening, Minikloon released another update, the 1.0.6 Bonk Patch, on February 25th. This patch fixed the immense problems with the insurance perk and nerfed the participation XP exploit by fixing the lobby swap ability. Even still, people could earn exponentially more and more participation XP by AFKing in one lobby. On April 12th, the F6 Watchdog Report duplication glitch was discovered by some Skyblock players, sold to Resi, and just a week later it was leaked to the public. Before it was patched, the game was absolute chaos. The glitch was so simple and so widespread I would estimate nearly 40% of everyone on the pit at that time was abusing the dupe. Around here is when HX got banned for boosting. Because of the competitive game system, he was unable to join the pit for a couple of months even after his unban. This allowed I'm Harry SMH to pass him an XP, as Harry was using a combination of participation XP and botting. On April 14th, Mathematics and Moist Rain discovered the recon glitch which allowed them to gain incredible amounts of XP super quickly. They abused it for less than a month before it was patched, and on the 23rd, another duplication glitch was discovered. This new dupe involved a similar mechanism mechanism to the F6 report dupe, but it was kept quiet for much longer. A couple of people, including Rezi and Dropping, profited immensely in terms of in-game wealth, but based on principle, they refused to ever sell or trade any of their duped items. Soon, I'm Harry SMH reached Prestige 45 to find the new color Black Brackets, and four months later, he reached the max level of Prestige 50. He discovered that on the pit, whenever you gain more than the integer limit of XP, the game freaks out and brings you straight to level 120. Thus, he hit the max Prestige 50 on January 3rd of this year, abusing participation XP to get there. While Harry was AFKing though, other players started to use something called spade swapping to deal tons of extra damage while streaking. Combat spades deal extra damage, and when a player swaps between a spade and a diamond sword really quickly, sometimes the player can double hit. This is how Bomp managed to get a streak of over 34,000 kills. Even more overpowered than spade swapping is kung fu swapping, which deals even more damage. It's kinda crazy how busted this game is sometimes. Personally, I haven't logged onto the pit in months, and the game is in generally poor condition. There's always the possibility that it can be revived, but I don't see that happening without some major balancing changes making the game a lot more new player friendly. Nonetheless, the pit has been a fascination of mine for 5 years, and I hope I was successful in sharing those captivating aspects of this corner of Hypixel with you. I'm absolutely certain there's tons of things I missed, particularly in the most recent two years when I was less active in the game. Notable players I glossed over, YouTubers like Not Giovanni, which really helped me out with his tutorials when I first got into the pit, Duct Tape Digger, who was the first to stream on the game, Pink Eve, who I totally erased from pit history, there's also Maisie, Artie Creep, and Tac9, who contributed so much to the game and the community. Personally, I have to thank everyone who supported this project with information, screenshots, footage, and financial contributions. Particularly, I have to thank Rezi for sponsoring this insane undertaking and making this entire project possible. Also, shout out to Minikloon for making the pit in the first place. None of this would be here without him. Anyhow, I've been your host Sudi, and I don't know, will there be a next time?